Hey guys, Majo up here, and today we are going to be getting the new series, as in we are going to be making a 2D platformer with our engine. This is technically a continuation of our engine video, because we could sit here all day long thinking about things that we could put into the engine, or changes to the classes we have, that would be beneficial, right? But I find it more beneficial to actually just try making a game with it, and you'll run into barriers where it's like, oh, I wish I had this, or this is annoying, we should make it easier to do, and then change the engine accordingly. So we're going to be modifying the engine as we go to make it easier to make games with. Okay, so, first off, we're going to need to get rid of everything here, because we're not drawing a light. Alright, so let's leave it the same, and we should end up with a nice empty screen okay now I'm going to create a new class outside of my game manager and we're gonna make a game object so our game object is going to be an abstract class and this app game object is going to be the basis for all the objects in our game like the player and enemies and uh, projectiles so what I mainly want in a game object is we need two abstract methods. An abstract void update, which will take a float dt ashes game container gc and float dt as in delta time. So the dt is going to be the time Did that changes? No. It doesn't like my game container. What is it? Oh, okay. For some reason it didn't import it when I hit control shift L. Alright, so our float DTs are delta time, which is needed to know the time between frames. And we also have the game container for input, and so we know how big our screen is and stuff like that. So we're going to make a public abstract void render, and I'm going to also take in the game container, mainly just so I know things like how big is the screen and stuff like that. It, it can come in handy. And a renderer R, because we're going to be using the renderer a lot and just having it passed in directly is nice, so you don't have to say game container dot get renderer every time you want to use the renderer. Okay? So, I kind of want to have some basic functions of a game object, like these are some set things that game objects have. And that'll be a private, actually not private, protected is the word I'm looking for. A protected um, int, I'm going to call it position x and position y and a protected int width and height so we'll have a location for the object and a height and width for the object which we'll use for collision detection and i also want a protected string tag which will be helpful for identifying our objects in, in an object array all right so we'll have those and that should be all we need right now, and we'll generate getters and setters for all of our methods. And there we go. And that should finish up our game object class. So, I'm going to go back to game manager, and I'm going to add in our game objects. So, I'm going to add this directly into the game manager. So, I'm, I'm going to use this as like a state. Now, usually when you make games, you have different kinds of states. You have the menu state for when you're in the menu, you have a play state for in the game. I'm going to code this as we're just, you start up the game, you're immediately in the game. Normally you have like a menu state. We'll create the states later. I just want to focus on the thing that's more important. We don't have any GUI classes, so I'm not going to be making a GUI in this video. So we're going to make an array list for a game object. And I'm going to call it objects equals new array list game object. Import that. So now to update it, we're going to loop through our objects. Um, and I'm using a for loop iterator specifically like this, not using the special iterator because I want to be able to modify and remove objects from our uh, objects mid loop and you can't do that which reminds me we forgot one thing in game object that we do need and that is a protected boolean called dead and we're going to actually initialize this to false 
So this Boolean method is how we'll determine whether or not to remove a method, I mean not a method, an object from our object array or not. So I'm going to set this equal to false by default. So if this becomes true, we're going to remove it from our objects array list. Okay? So we're going to loop through our objects. I'm going to get them at i. And I'm going to update. Right? And then after I update, I want to see if this object is dead. So I'm going to do objects.getI that is dead. Right? If it is, then I'm going to objects to get i that remove uh, not get i that remove i. Okay, but this actually causes a problem because we'll remove this object, and it when we remove an object from an array list, all the objects shift upwards, but the for loop will keep going, and it'll actually skip the object below it when it removes an object. So in order to prevent it from skipping. We have to subtract one from i. Okay. So there's our update. And for render, we're not going to be modifying our game object. So I'm going to use the short form for for loop, which will just be a game object object for objects. And just going to say object.render. And it's a lot, a lot, lot nicer for loop. Okay, and that will do it for the objects and our arrays. So now we need to actually add an object, and we're going to add in our player object to begin with, just to get something on the screen. Okay, so we'll call it player, and I'm going to extend game object. I'm going to add um, implemented methods. Give us all these nice little methods. And we'll make a constructor for player. Now, player, I'm going to, when we initialize it, I'm going to give it a location. So I'm going to give it in position X and in position Y. So I'm going to do is this dot tag. I'm going to set it equal to player because it's our player. This dot position X equals position X. This dot position Y equals position Y. Very simple. Now, the way we're going to be doing collision detection is we're going to be using a tile-based collision detection. So you know how, like, if you look at games like Mario, each tile is like 8 by 8 on, like, a, I'm talking about the old ones, the old classic Marios. Each tile is like 8 by 8 pixels. Well, each of those pixels can have a val like, those 8 by 8 regions can have a value of solid or not solid. And that's how we're going to determine it. So our actual position is going to be a multiple of 16 here. And actually, uh, yeah, we can, we're going to do 16 by 16 pixels for our tiles. But I'm going to change something in our game object. I'm actually going to make this position X and position Y a floating point number. Uh, because it'll save us from having to convert a bunch when we're doing our basic math. So let's, re let's uh, refactor it, and I actually want to rename it. Why can't it? Hey, oh, can I not rename these? Oh, I can't rename these. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it manually. Float, and that's gonna throw off everything down here because everything's gonna be a float, 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 and float. That's not too bad to change. Okay, so now we have. Yeah, here. Actually, at the terminal. Anyways, so now we have it as a float. Okay, and I want to render my player just to get him on screen. And we're gonna just draw. We're gonna draw a fill a filled rectangle for right now. We don't have any art. Uh, I'll probably make some art, uh, and we'll put that in the game. But for right now, we just want to get the code in the game. So we're gonna use like uh, placeholder images, aka squares. We're just gonna use a square. So. Offset. We're gonna we're gonna render at position x, position y, and width and height, and color will be we'll make our player green. So no red, green, no blue. All right, and this will yell because position x is in fact a float, and we need an integer in order to render it. So there we go. And we'll go back to our game manager here, and I'm going to say. 
objects dot add new player and I'm gonna add them at two two and now when we run it we should have a nice little green square there's not an error Edit that add reset. Why is reset up here? What was reset for? <laughs> this is what happens when you come back into uh Do you ever call reset? What where where is reset coming from? I just I just now noticed that. I'm getting a little sidetracked. There is no reset here. Oh, okay. Game container. <laughs> I don't know why this there's reset here, but maybe from the last tutorials, but I don't remember them. So, is our renderer being called? Yes, it is being called. We are not getting our tile, so we need to debug here a little bit. Why are we not getting our image rendered? Oh, okay, figured it out. I I realize why. So this we got to set our width and our height. So our width will be equal to sixteen, and our height will be equal to sixteen. I feel dumb for that. All right. So now when we run it, we get our circle, which we have dim lighting. And for right now, for test purposes, I don't want the dim lighting. Let's, uh, where, where, where was I at? I was, yeah, I was in renderer. I don't need this print line here anymore. And I'm also going to go to my game manager here. And when we start up here, I also want to say... You see that? Get. I can't get the render. Why don't I have a get render? Source. Getters and setters. I hate it when it does that. Getters and setters for the renderer. I want to get the render. Game manager. See, this is like things you notice in the game engine that aren't there. You need to get them. And I also do not have a setter in my renderer. For the ambient color, which I also want. All right, let's make sure it's up here, right? So this ambient color, I want to be able to modify this. So I need another getter and setter here for ambient color. Go back. So I want to set ambient color, and I want to set it to white, which I'm just going to type in negative one, which is white. So now, oh, I might uh, actually hang on. I might have to do that. Actually, our render is not set up in before start. That's odd. Uh, da, da, da. Right. Might not work because of, yeah. Because I thought so. Okay. Um. Hmm. This doesn't work right here. Because it's in a different thread. Yeah. Okay, so it can't modify directly that way. I have to put it in the update for it. Uh, it's whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll get rid of this later on. Actually, I'm just going to directly set in the renderer. Sucks. Um, cause I, if I could pass game container through here. Let's, let's do that, actually. I'm going to put in a new thing for our abstract game. Which will be a public abstract void init, which will take in a game container. GC, because there's some things we can't modify until the game is actually started in the game's thread. So, by adding that, I can go to my game container, and right here, before we actually start our while loop, I can say game that init this. Go back to our game manager, because now our game manager is missing. A method, add it in. I'm gonna put it above our update. Boom. And I'm gonna say GC that set that get renderer dot set ambient color to negative one. And that will fix our woes. Yes it will. Good. So now we have our square. A little bit harder than it should have been. Alright. Boom. That's gonna call it. Uh, actually, let's let's make the player move just real quick. Very basic movement, just because we have a square on the screen. That's not very exciting. It's not really great for an episode. So let's let's add in player moving. 
So uh, we'll do if gc dot get input that is key. We just want is key, and we'll do key event that bk underscore w, and we'll take our position y minus equals dt times, and we need like a speed. So I'm gonna say ten, but I'm gonna actually go up here and make a private. Uh, Private float speed, and we'll set equal to 10. So we'll just take speed here, put it there. And we need to do this for all four directions. We don't have gravity yet, and we're only going to have two directions in a jump in the final version. But for right now, just so we have something to move and test with, we're going to do this. So we'll do plus a is minus x. Position y is x plus for d. The w is position y minus our speed. And s is the opposite. A is subtracting from position y. I mean x. And d is the opposite. So if we go play, we can now slowly <laughs> move our square around the screen. Let's increase that speed to 100. And now we have a square that we can nice and move around. Alrighty, I think that's going to call it for this episode. Comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching.